Where most people overestimate their abilities under the influence, aside from their sense of humor or superhuman strength, is how alcohol slows reaction time. It happens to every single person under the influence, regardless of tolerance or drinking experience or skill in any activity, including driving. It is, plain and simple, the result of alcohol being the central nervous system depressant. Reaction time is one-fifth of a second for an unimpaired person. With alcohol in the system, reaction time is slowed to four-fifths of a second at 0 0.06 BAC. That's not even the legal drinking limit. And that's about two drinks for a guy my size. What this means for driving is this. At 60 miles per hour, a second means 88 feet. A fifth of a second is 17.5 feet. Four-fifths of a second is 70.4 feet. The van slamming on the brakes in front of an impaired driver is 53 feet closer reaction time-wise compared to an unimpaired driver. It's a whole lot closer if both of you are impaired and the driver of the oncoming car is impaired or one or both cross the center line. I'm 53 feet from the end of this pier in the San Francisco Bay. I wouldn't gamble with this distance, and that's just because the water's cold. Why would I challenge this with a 4,000-pound Ford Explorer? Most states require repeat drinking and driving offenders to have ignition interlock devices to prevent the vehicle from being started by an impaired driver. However, of the nearly 10,000 alcohol-related deaths in the U.S. annually, three of four of them are caused by drivers without a prior conviction for drinking and driving. That guy is the one who thinks, I'm fine, I can handle the 15, three, 53 feet, and I'm a great driver. I'm being sarcastic, of course. New technology might change all that in cars, but it doesn't change the formula for reaction time with impaired drivers. I'm Scott Stevens. That's the Sobriety 60.